Just when you thought portable digital converter amps couldn't get any more portable and more consumer friendly, I'll tell you what guys, this is the year of inline USB-C DAC amps the size of half of a used rubber eraser, a paper clip, or even as part of the USB-C plug itself. In other words, they're small and they're small for a reason. Studies have found out that our office jobs has caused our muscles to shrink. So holding anything heavier than a spiral folder gives us carpal tunnel. And you should totally believe what I just said. But anyways, guys, this is the tiny Quest style NHB 15 and M12i DAC amp. Let's see if these are bomber or bummer. The Quest style M12i retails for 150 bucks and it comes in either silver or black colorways, USB-C in and 3.5 mil out. That's all you got. By the way, the USB-C bypasses DACs in your phones, laptops or sound cards in your PCs, in case you're wondering. And internally, there's an ESS Sabre ES9281AC chip that supports PCM768 and DSD512 decoding, providing true lossless audio for what it's worth. There's also a Torx amp in here that doesn't consume as much battery. Real quickly, I want to show you the LED status lights built into the M12 so you can quickly like at a glance see what the gain is, where my thumb is. And also on the left right here, it shows what sampling rate it's running at. So anything less than 44 kilohertz will be a single LED. In this case, because the song is 192, it's showing uh, double LEDs. The NHB 15, on the other hand, retails for $500 and is also available in silver or black. This is the silver version. Type-C connector here, 10 mil dynamic drivers in each of the uh, year pieces doing all the grunt work. Uh, in terms of chipset in a capsule, it's an MA2430 with independent DAC and amplifier. In terms of the LEDs, also actually simpler here than on the M12. So for better or for worse, this thing only shows the sampling rate, but not the gain. In terms of the year pieces itself, they're really, really nice and they're very well built and easy to remove and just swap out your ear tips as you need. Uh, and also the connectors come off pretty quickly and uh, are nicely done as well. In the admittedly really nice and intricate packaging, especially once you get through all the layers and foam paddings, you'll see like replacement ear tips. And also still, once you get through the layers of paperwork, you will find that Questa provides an extra cable. In this case, uh, it's for using the included IEMs on their own or I believe Questile knows that we all have our favorite buds that we might want to hook up to from time to time. Now, obviously there are two components to consider here. The earphones and the DAC amp both bring their own signature to the table. So I thought it would be important to isolate one so we can have a better idea of how they sound and why they sound the way they do together. And yes, it might surprise you that I actually thought of that. I'm not just a pretty face. I do use my brain from time to time. But anyways, I stuck the ear pieces onto the extra IEM cable quest I provided in the box. And then I ran my playlist at about 60% volume. And so separation is moderately open. Imaging is tight. Uh, there's warm low end, detailed mids with a slight recess to the upper mids and highs. So a couple of track examples. Maria Calas's normal act one. There's prominent sibilance from the recorded space, just like the OG. So that's plus points right there. Billie Eilish's bad guy. Bass is full. Vocals are focused with clean articulation. And then Toto's Africa has a very nice sparkle in the cymbals and keys. Now with the DAC amp added in, overall there's a slightly lower bass extension, a slightly more expanded headspace, and there's more confidence in the four to six kilohertz range. And the amp raises the gain by about five to 10%. And Ollie though, normal act one, that sibilance that I was talking about earlier is ever so slightly less pronounced now, which might be the DSP mistakenly cleaning up the so-called noise. I'll tell you what, I'm a fan of the understated design of both the earphones as well as the DAC capsule. The IEM has some real heft to it too. And I mean, it's not like heavy to the point it's uncomfortable. It just has this really nice feel in your hands. So like quality stuff, basically. The amount of power that comes out of this tiny little thumb drive thing really surprised me, guys. Composure all the way up the volumetric scale is stunning and things like lows are given some emphasis, making it full bodied. 
giving a nice deep thump, especially like say when Unfinished Sympathy ramps up or listening to Roundabout by Yes is a total joy with these. The famous acoustic guitar lick is tight and precise. Keys by Rick Wakeman play distinctively in the left corner of the hit space right here. Now, highs, I would say, can get peaky on busy tracks like EDM or Crash Metal, but otherwise, I'm sure, actually no, I'm 100% sure you will enjoy this. The M12i's clean lines are refreshingly simple, barely garnering attention unless you really start looking. And the case for the price could have very well been plastic or stainless steel, but it isn't. It's black anodized aluminum alloy that really feels nice in the hands. And pardon me for geeking out here a little bit, but the glass panel is quite interesting as well. Crestile also could have just given us a piece of clear glass and just called it a day, except in this case, they added dot matrix half tone patterns on both ends, kind of like Fritz on car windshields to hide the USB-C and audio ports, plus also guide the eyes of anyone staring into the panel to focus on the PCB and LED status lights. And there's more. The glass is also Kunlun glass developed by Huawei for its flagship phones. It's apparently quite a few times more brake resistant than even Gorilla Glass Victus 2 use in phones like the Samsung S23 for what it's worth. I'm not sure if you can see this on screen, but the cable is shockingly thin and dainty, you guys. I was kind of like taken aback when I first unboxed these. And sure, they do the job well, but I'm afraid I might like snap them in half the moment I sneeze or something. And I think even a strand of vermicelli noodles might be thicker than these. Also, I'm not sure what this is called. You can let me know down in the comments, but this sheath between the cable and the connector head that protects cables from twists and bend damage, you know? Yeah, I don't see this lasting very long because for the money, you would think Questile would be doing something more robust, right? I'll tell you what, this thing performs very well, but $500, well, sorry, I'm not completely sold. I was like, say, able to compare the NHB 15 with even the $80 Golden Ages, and I actually found the Moondrop almost as capable. I don't exactly know what's going on here, but the sampling rate LED indicator is either not accurate or is easily tripped up. So watch this. When I skip through a mixture of 44 and 96 kilohertz tracks and then go back, you can see that both LEDs stay lit. It's only when I pause and then resume will the DAC realize the error of its ways. And the NHB 15 does it too, but not as much. It's probably too early to tell, or maybe I'm just freaking out for nothing here, but having the USB-C port on, say, your phone in this case, doing double duty for charging and the Quest Out dongle can wear out the port faster because in ideal conditions, USB-C ports should last around 13 years, assuming you plug something in twice a day. But still, it honestly makes me wary if one day I'm just not able to charge my phone anymore because the port is shot. Yeah, this is the kind of situation I really miss proper 3.5 millimeter outs. Interestingly, and also yet not, I've gravitated more towards the cheaper M12 for my daily listening duties. And I guess it's because I'm not restricted to IEMs. You know, I can just unplug it and plug in like a pair of good set of headphones and then I'm good to go. The NHB 15 and also the NHB 12 for Apple Lightning users is the more complete package um, Questile paired the DAC amp nicely with a very good IEM. So all you need to worry about is pumping it with like a good source and you're guaranteed to have a good time. But that being said, the high price means it's meant for a smaller subset of hobbyists. Well, that's all I got today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this and for being here. And also thanks to Questile for sending me these to check out. And of course, in no way does that affect my honest opinion and how I present it to you guys, because that's how we roll here. Anyways, if you like what I do, subscribe, thumbs up this video, check out my other links and other ways you can support me. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world, because guess what? The world needs it more than ever, and it starts with you. I love you all very much. Peace out and God bless.